I know what you're saying to yourself right now. Jesse, you're so handsome and you're always right. And of course, that's all true. But why did we name the show I'm Right? Because I happen to be right all the time. And what did I tell you while Donald Trump was president about how the media was going to treat the next Republican? What did I say? You remember, I came on this camera and I said, look, understand this. Everything right now is the end of the world. They're just going to say the next thing about the Republican and he's going to be worse than Trump. And I have a great example of that that I'm going to read for my next guest, Kaylin Dora. Kaylin is the VP of Communications and Director of the Center for Media Accountability at the America First Policy Institute. That is a mouthful, but Kaylin, we have Samantha B. I know most people don't know who that is. Believe me, you're not missing out. And quote, in a recent straw poll, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis came out as Republicans' first choice for the 2024 presidential election. Before you celebrate Republicans turning away from Trump, take a look at all the ways Ron DeSantis could be so much worse. Kaylin, is Ron DeSantis worse than Donald Trump for the left? I hope he is. Uh, it certainly sounds like it, right? He's putting his money where his mouth is and actually doing things, which uh, I know is, is <laughs> it's kind of a tough concept for a lot of liberals to uh, to, to understand. Um, but yeah, I mean, between the Samantha B, again, I don't, I can't remember her being a part of the news. It, it must have been, I must have been in high school, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm fairly young myself. But it, it's been decades since she was, you know, relevant in any sense. And between that and them attacking him over the. Uh, the incident in Florida over the weekend with the building collapse. I mean, they're they're wasting no time trying to frame him as an awful person, which means he's definitely doing something right, don't you think? Oh, I think he's definitely doing something right. What is he doing right? In your opinion, I mean, clearly they're giving Ron DeSantis the hard side eye and really worried about him for 2024. My question is why? I mean, I understand Florida's an important state and he's the governor of Florida, but what is he doing that's making them so nervous? He clearly is. Yeah, I think that boils down to him, you know, providing a lot of transparency and attacking the root cause of a lot of these issues is that the left kind of has a stranglehold on our culture, right? He's going in, he's going after critical race theory, he's providing transparency in the classroom so that, you know, for better or for worse, right, uh, parents are seeing what teachers are, are teaching our children. Uh, he's been a fearless attacker of the media. Uh, if you remember the 60 Minutes debacle that took place one or two months ago, uh, where they selectively clipped his, his words out of context, he's, he's really gone after everybody, and I think that's got a lot of people nervous. They, they think that they can get away with, with doing all this stuff in broad daylight. It's, I would say it's a temple of a liberal ideology, right? They think so lowly of people like you and me and everyday Americans that they think they can just like memory a whole history in real time and no one will say anything about it. And he's actually he's saying things. He's actually doing things uh, to combat this. And I got to tip my hat to him, man. He's, he's killing it. He's doing a great job. Well, thank you for accidentally leading me into my next question perfectly, Kaylin. Speaking of memory hoing, remember this guy, gosh, what? how do you say his name? Andrew... K Andrew Cuomo, I think you say his name. I can hardly remember because he's the governor of New York that everybody said walked on water, oh, about 15 minutes ago. And then I have numbers here from the Media Research Center saying ABC, NBC, CBS, all these people, they haven't mentioned his name in ages. That's so weird, Kalen. Why do you think that is? Well, Jesse, it's Emmy Award winner, uh, Andrew Cuomo, last time I checked. but <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, no, he's he's absolutely he's he's totally fallen off the face of the earth, and this is because they all know that to do some proper introspection on this issue, uh, that they would find themselves guilty of absolute malpractice. That's the problem with journalists, right? They all think that they're morally right, which makes them all dangerous political activists. None of these people are are journalists. I don't know if you've seen you know Tapper's show this this year since January has lost about seventy five percent of its audience. I mean. People aren't falling for their nonsense any any longer, and they have no clear you know narrative other than to just raise their fists. You know, old man yells at clouds about uh, whatever Trump is doing and his time not in the presidency. It's it's absolutely absurd. It's not like you said. It's not journalism. This is just activism. It's propaganda. It makes the CCP blush, right? And they, they would kill for coverage like this. 
Caitlin, what's wrong with journalism? And I realize we've only got about, oh, you know, three, four minutes left in this interview, and I just asked you a question that would take 10 hours to, to answer. But, I mean, for me, like, I, and I know this is the most naive thing in the world. I picture a journalist, or I, at least I used to, as somebody who goes to, you know, school for journalism and then gets out and wants to simply report on things. Well, clearly we don't have that. We have a bunch of far-left activists now out to destroy everything you and I care about. Why? How, how did that happen? What happened? Look, Jesse, I, uh, I wasn't the best in school. I, I didn't grow up uh, being a real uh, good school learner. I did, I did bring a visual aid today. I hope that's okay with you. Uh, this right oh, of here, course. this right here is a photo of, uh, of what the, the left, what CNN, what they all implicitly endorse, right? It's because they have no values. Their values are the narrative, whatever enriches them for personal gain, whatever you know, brushes aside whatever criticism uh, that you might have for them, that's what they're about. They're not about covering, you know, uncovering facts or, or doing any real original reporting. Half the stuff I see on Twitter nowadays is uh, someone talking about someone else writing something. Right, like it's it's everyone is lazy. Like I said, they the left has such a stranglehold on our culture. It's infected every single aspect of our society, and these guys can't be bothered to actually do work and and uncover a real fact or a real story. Everything is spoon fed. It's all uh, a predetermined narrative. It, that's that's my short answer. But you're right. Like this is a question that would take years to talk about. I mean, think about it. They're refusing to cover these Cuomo allegations, for example, right? And they brought on Jeffrey Tubin like two weeks ago to talk about his uh, oopsie daisy on Zoom. Like they don't really care about anything they say they care about. If that was the case, uh, every employee at uh, CNN would have walked by now. Uh, every woman, especially. And um, it's just it's just disgusting, man. I mean, it's it's really sad to think about. I want to sit here and crack jokes about you know how awful CNN is. I, sometimes I just can't bring myself to do it, man. It's just it's it's too easy. No, it is sad. I mean, look, we all make fun of them. I'm as guilty of this as anyone else. But the truth is, it is it is a sad, sad, sad state of affairs for a nation that you really can't believe anything you see on TV. Hey, thanks so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe. You heard me, like it, subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it and a lot more me.